also slave river site. Uh, Asen Manso played a pivotal role during the trade. It was the name itself says it all. Asen means persons on transit or people that are just passing through. Oral history of it that majority of the people that formed this community were some of the captives who managed to escape. But because we did not know how to return to wherever we were captured, we formed part of this community. So in this community, everything that connects to the trade, we don't joke with it. Because we were in the same chains and shackles. We saw with our own eyes our brothers that were killed. Maybe we managed to escape in here in order to tell our history from this end. But we also saw another group that were taken away. We didn't know where they were taken to. Until later, history made us know that those of our brothers and sisters were taken to the land unknown. As during the trade, slave market was very, very important because that was where the buyers and the sellers meet. Before the coming of the Europeans, our chiefs were very egocentric. So they started fighting among themselves for territorial advantages. Now, when I'm able to defeat your community, I do get your men and women as my prisoners of war. Mm -hmm. Those same prisoners were the ones that were used in building the local economy. They work in the mines, they work in the plantations. Those that were even learned rose in becoming chiefs of their community. They have rights, they have privileges, and they were not owned. Others argued that it was an indentured servitude. It is only the chief that have the right to take the life of any enslaved person, provided if the chief could justify that. It was evident when the Nifaene Nana Kwesi Amu of Isiakwa community killed three enslaved persons. He was summoned to the court and asked, Who, why do you have to do that to them? He argued that it is only customary law that, I've give, that customary law has given them the right for them to be only the people that could take the life of a slave, provided if it could justify it. And his justification was because they rebelled against his kingdom. This kind of practice was so different from the enactment that was uh, passed on in Carolina in 1616. Mm -hmm. With the Carolina, every free man have absolute rights over their enslaved person. They could kill, they could do whatever they want to do with you, and nobody could question them. Now, the changing of this system in Africa started in 1471. That was when the first European arrived. They were the Portuguese. The Portuguese never arrived as traders. They arrived in three phases. The first stage was the, that they arrived as spy. When they came over and they saw you, they were so surprised. How spiritual centered you were, how coordinated we were, how organized we were, and how spirited we were. They have never seen that glory. So they were even scared and they started watching us and learning about us. But it was so easy for them to learn about us because for us, we are very hospitable. Mm -hmm. And they took that advantage of how hospitable we were and they penetrated. Then after the penetration, the second phase was when they started to come as missionaries in order to indoctrinate us. And there are many books, which I've even given you some the letter by uh, King Lep, uh, Leopold II, the, the, the second, which tells you about their intention in manipulating us. Then the third stage is when they came as traders in order to take our best. Mm -hmm. Now, when you read most literature, they tell you they came to buy slaves. But I tell you the truth, they never came to buy slaves. Look at it from, from this angle and you would appreciate it better. If 
I want, I have a big plantation. Hmm. And I want somebody to work on those plantations. Would I go for anyone or I'll go for experience? Experience. That's right. That's the best, of course. Thank you. If I wanted to build infrastructure, like the way you built the White House and the other things, mm -hmm. would I go for somebody who have, who have no idea or would I, would I go for experience? Experience. Mm -hmm. So they aren't picked the and they choose the best mm -hmm. and they turn them into slaves. Mm -hmm. Now, they've looked everything about us. 1492, supposedly, yeah. the new world mm -hmm. has been identified. People were needed to work on those plantations. Mm -hmm. They knew that the Indians, they've, saw, they've seen them, they've seen so many of the race, but they knew we were so powerful. Even our spirit could transform the land. So, one Portuguese priest in the person of Bartolomeu de la Casas, mm -hmm. upon review, said we should buy our best to develop the hours and that started Bartholomew has a plan to take you away but how can that plan be fulfilled because the same people uh, were, being, were being used in order to develop their own economy so how do you get these people and that led to the three stages of acquisition of enslaved African the first stage was through kidnapping and deceit. That was when they came to you and they told you, Sweetheart, you, you've been so good to me. You've treated so well with me. Why don't you come to my ship? Let me just appreciate you and just have some fun. As hospitable as you are, you followed. And before you could realize, you were in chains and shackles in the middle of nowhere. A community closer to Cape Coast called Anomabo. When you go to that animal community, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a harbor. Even children will tell you this history, that majority of their brothers and sisters were deceived to board the slave ship. Yeah. Another famous incident happened in the Volta region, where all the chiefs and people were also stolen. But the question is, how many people can you continue deceiving? Mm -hmm. So, they moved to the second stage. That was when they consulted some warriors like Babatu, Samuel Tuwe, Benguai, and the rest. They gave them guns and ammunition in order for them to raise smaller communities to get the numbers. Mm -hmm. But even with that, they can't get all the numbers because the majority of the numbers were with the chiefs. So the third phase is how do we get it from the chiefs? So when you read our literature, the Ashantis deal so much in the trade, but the Achims and other communities. They never sold their any captive away. They maintained them in their community. But they also managed to get people from those tribes because of how manipulative they were. Mm -hmm. They made the Ashantis so powerful. And they used the Ashantis to intimidate most kingdoms. So they went to other kingdoms and told them, the Ashantis are so powerful. They will come for you anyway. Mm -hmm. We want to protect you. Mm -hmm. But the only way we could protect you is don't worry, we'll protect you. That is your no conditions. When the war rages, hmm. that is where they told the chiefs, the only way we could support our condition is for you to agree in giving us your prisoners of war hmm. after, the, after the battle. But if you are not able to do that, then we'll leave you and you'll be taken anyway for us. Hmm. Some chiefs were so scared, hmm. they gave in. Hmm. Other chief fought, they died. Hmm. Other chief fought they lived with their people. So in the discourse of the trade, this was how it all started. Now, slave markets play the most important role because Ghana alone was having over 69 slave markets. But out of the 69 slave markets, two markets has been documented to have played the most important role. This market were the Salaga market, which was the largest slave market at the northern part of Ghana. As in Manso in here, was the second largest, but the busiest of all the markets because it was closer to the three dungeons along the coast, Fort Amsterdam, Cape Coast Dungeons, and Elimina Castle. So captives, mostly prisoners of war, that were captured from the upper borders of the country, some parts of Burkina Faso, some parts of Nigeria, everywhere you were captured, in chains and shackles, 
your first destination is the Salaga market. In the Salaga market, you were given something small to eat and you were given something small to drink. Not because they wanted to feed you fat, but it's because they knew that the journey from Salaga mm -hmm. to Asin Manso, majority will not make it. So after they drank food in chains and shackles, barefooted and half naked, our ancestors were made to walk 300 miles all the way from Asin, from, from the north in order to get to Asin Manso. The journey is not a journey that I even love to talk about because I don't even know how they were even able to survive through the world. My granny told me some history which was also shared to her by a granny. So it was basically a generational story that was told me. She said when they were coming through the forest, the picture that was painted to her by a granny, it's so much that she cannot, she didn't want to explain it better. She, she told me you could, some people got pricked because it wasn't treated. It affected most part of their body. And you could see someone walking who is half rotten. Women will be having their menstrual flows all on them. The flies will be enjoying and nobody thinks about them. People got their hands chopped off and a lot of people have wounds and other things around them. When they were coming through the forest, one of the things that they were so scared of is attack on them by the wild animals. So when they were coming, these wild animals also knew our ancestors were not stronger because they were in chains and shackles. So they also used that opportunity to attack them and feed on most of them. Sometimes when the animals come, we, they try to come together to fend them off. But because the animals also attack in their numbers, they always have their way. So the raiders decided that they have to get a plan to save few in order to get to the market. And you know what the plan was? Very barbaric. Those of our brothers and sisters that were seen not marketable for them. They were taken out of their chains and shackles. They were chained around any big tree they find in the forest and used as bait in order to negotiate their way to the forest. So when the animals are also coming and they see them, they feed on them and they don't change. They don't change after the rest. They were able to survive for 280 miles and they got to a river 20 miles from here. The name of the river is the Pra River, P-R-A. So imagine you walking for 280 miles, no food, no water, and you saw a river. What, what would come into your mind? You need to get some water and drink. For me, I, was, I would drink all. Mm -hmm. I am sure that is the same way they thought. But they didn't know that that river, no one of them would drink in that river. The only people that drank in the river was those that were seen not marketable. Mm -hmm. A cannonball as big as size of a football is connected to their shackles. See? It were thrown in that river to drown and die. That is why we, the people of Asen Manso, on the 31st day of July, we always go to that river to mourn our ancestors because we saw it. And that is why we don't celebrate any festival apart from the Emancipation Festival because we also believe that we were freed from slavery. They landed here at Asen Manso. This was where your ages were first determined by putting a device called a speculum oris into your mouth, open your mouth, count your teeth, then by forecasting your ages. Broken bottles were used to shave us for us to look cleaner. We were made to go through the river in order to take our last bath. Went through our first branding and our first auction. Those that were not able to go through their journey also ended here. They were killed and buried everywhere from the edge of the grass all the way to the river. So we are even standing on the graves of our ancestors. That is why when you are coming through the gate, the gate looks very short. So most of you came in like this. Yes, unconsciously, you've already paid your respect to the grounds before entering. The other group that were able to go through the spaces, they landed at the three dungeons along the coast. In that dungeons, when the time came for the slave ship to, the slave ship arrived, and you were being taken away, you were also made to walk through a particular door. And that name on that door is the door of no return. What is the difference between the door of no return and the last bath? It's because they wanted to tell you something. Words are mean, have meaning and words are very powerful. Because with that, they believe that you're never ever going to make it alive to even tell your story as it is. 
That is why they followed you through the plantations. You fought, you survived. You thought it was okay. Segregation came in. You fought, you mm -hmm. thought you've won. Racism, discrimination, and even today, mm -hmm. there's something like police brutality. Mm -hmm. All in an attempt to make sure you don't even gather your thoughts mm -hmm. and bring your own history out. They always want you to rely on your history being told you by them. Mm -hmm. The second reason is that they believe that our culture and traditions as Africans should be off. Mm -hmm. That is why, but little did they know that we Africans are genetically coded. Nobody told you to keep, your, to keep this air. Nobody told you to keep that air. It is already in you. You know who you were from the spirit. So we are still doing the same thing. You come in here and you see me pouring uh, the rum on the ground and, and praying, libation. You do the, you do the same thing to my homie. You pour it on the ground. Why do you do the same thing? Because it is in us. You know that is who you are. So today, as we are conscious and we are coming back home, that door of no return is a spiritual door that is blocking the path between you and I. So that door needs to be changed to the door of return. But you cannot just change that door. You need to first pass through the spiritual phase before you pass through the physical phase. So with the spiritual phase, the spiritualists who told us two of our brothers and sisters should be returned in order to cancel that curse on the door of no return. So in choosing, we came across these two of our great ancestors with a beautiful story to share. The first, we have Madame Krista from Kingston, Jamaica. And right in the middle, we have Samuel Carson from New York, US of A. Mm -hmm. Madame Krista, a very young, beautiful lady who was captured, but landed in Jamaica as enslaved African. She managed to escape and join the Maroons. She was also not lucky, she was captured again. And she was in prison in Jamaica. But while she was in prison, she saw things the eyes never wanted to see. Our people were being killed, raped, murdered. And even when you fall sick, no one takes you to the hospital. You were taken to the veterinary because they see us more as an animal that was good. Being a mother, she cannot stand and observe all these things. So she decided rather to rebel against the act by starving herself to death. But during that era, when you do that, the punishment awaiting you is enormous. All the whips, she was able to endure all, all that. But one of the things that broke the camel's back was when she had a teeth all chiseled out just to take all off with blood in order to force her to feed. That's by going through that pain. Maybe she saw something that we didn't see. She stood firm, never took in anything. 1830, she lost her life. And in 1835, the people of Jamaica were free from slavery. The reason why Madame Krista was one of the people that was brought back in here is because of the history. The name Krista, nobody knew her name, but the name Krista came about when they were assuming the mortal remain. It was, she was surrounded by crystals. And that influenced the name Madame Krista in order to tell the world the history of Madame Krista even when she was buried. Samuel Carson, one of our great men who rose to uh, some of one of the positions in the US Navy. Uh, uh, she was buried at the uh, Wall Street uh, and uh, she was one of us, he, he was one of us who without any formal education could even rise to that level. And we thought it's why that it's one of the people that needs to be recommended. So we should have one from a, a woman and a man. One representing Jamaica, the Caribbeans, and the other one representing the US. So the two mortal remains will enter the country through the infamous door of no return of the Cape Coast Dungeons on the 31st day of July, 1998. Immediately they passed through the door, the name was changed to the door of return. And spiritually, we started coming home from that on. The following day being the 1st of August, they were buried here. And that informed us to celebrate our Emancipation Festival every 1st of August, particularly for the people of Asen Manso and the two of our ancestors and all of our brothers and sisters that could come over. Then after the burial, in, in November 11, 2019, the Prime Minister of Barbados, Her Excellency Mia Amamotli, she said she had a dream. She needed to bring all of their ancestors from Barbados back home. But the question is, you don't even know them. How do you bring them back home? 
she had a plan. She excavated all slaves in between Barbados. Every boat that she had with the soil, she brought all together in a beautiful casket all the way from Barbados. And that's the third tomb that you are seeing now. It has been closed because she needed to come and unveil it. After the barrier, another group also petitioned us that they also wanted to be buried here. Then we told them, we wish. But this land is the land of your ancestors. Mm -hmm. But this land could also be given to you. So we have over 444 of our brothers and sisters who have their bodies recremated. We have their ashes on this land. Mm -hmm. So the importance of this facility is because we do, we do have so many rituals that we do. So the importance of this facility is to bring all our ancestors everywhere together in a centralized position. So that when we go into the rituals, we know we have the backing of all of our ancestors. The trade was abolished in 1808, but not slavery. When you ask me the date at which, in which slavery was abolished, the truth of the matter is I will not be able to tell you. But I could tell you in the books that in the US of A, it was in 1863. In 1865, in the British colony was in 1835, French colony 1846. But for me, I think slavery has not, has not been abolished. Thank you. It has rather involved. And this type of slavery is even more painful. Mm -hmm. Now it has moved from slavery in this into that. Mm -hmm. That is what Bob Marley told us as Africans, mm -hmm. that we should emancipate ourselves from mental slavery. None other than ourselves can free our minds. Mm -hmm. How do you emancipate yourself from it? It is when you listen to your intuit, because your intuit brings you everything. The stories that were being told you, you read the books and your head and your brain tells you it's true. But ask yourself, that your intuit tell you this is true, and that thing is what is telling you it is not. So we should wise up and open our eyes. I'm going to take you to the, to, to, to the river from here. But when we get to the river, maybe we'll stop, and I'll tell you about a plant that you guys love as a drink. The name of that plant is the mimosa plant. I'll take you there, and we'll talk about that plant. And whenever you have a question, I'm just like your brother, you ask all your questions that you want to ask. So please, let's go to the mimosa plant.